All right, what do we know about ceramics? Well, ceramics, um, you know, we, we know that the stress strain behavior for a ceramic looks something like this. It's linear elastic, it fractures. Um, we know that there, so there, there's no plastic deformation, right? We know that, no plastic deformation. Another way of saying that same thing is they are brittle. Okay, so ceramics are brittle. You drop a coffee mug onto a hard floor and it'll shatter. You wouldn't expect it to dent, for example. So there's no plastic deformation, or we could say it's brittle. Um, ceramics are also poor in tension. Poor in tension. That means they have a low strength in tension. You, you bend the ceramic, it's going to crack on that tensile side. It's, um, it doesn't resist the opening of a crack very well. You know, if you got a ceramic material, and we're going to explore this in this video, right? You know, you pull it like this. Well, that crack is going to open up really easily. Um, on the other hand, ceramics are really good in compression. Okay, so they're really good in compression. Well, there's a crack, you know, it's just a, you know, like a crack in a piece of concrete, a pore, a little scratch on the surface even. Well, if you put it into tension, what happens is it acts to close that crack up. Okay, and so cer uh, ceramics, uh, like concrete, for example, is very good in compression. So why is this? What's going on? And can we can we kind of quantify this? Well, so first, the first thing to appreciate about ceramics is... Um, a lot of ceramics, because they have they have strong bonds in them. Okay, I've got strong bonds, high bond energy. They're typically ionic, although they, you can also have covalent ceramics. Okay, sometimes they're covalent. In either case, though, the bond energy is usually pretty high, and so that also translates to a high melting temperature high melting temperature. So we often have to process ceramics in the solid state. Okay, in the solid state. And so we use we use powder approaches. You know, we we, we start with the powder and, and heat it up and allow diffusion to occur and, and uh, you may have heard or perhaps you've heard of powder metallurgy. That's another approach where you use a powder and I mean, it's not the topic of this particular lecture or this video, but uh, some some words that perhaps you've seen or you can follow up on if you have an interest in it. You sintering at high temperature without melting it. So that's how we process it. But the downside to all that is that it's very very difficult to make a ceramic completely dense um, or difficult to make a ceramic we, we, we often say fully dense okay fully dense or another way of looking at it is instead of the density ceramics have a lot of porosity or are susceptible to are very sensitive to porosity. And what's a pore? A pore is like a it's like a hole in the material, basically. You know, you have a sponge, for example, in your kitchen, perhaps. And if that's supposed to be a sponge, you know, it's got little holes in it and so on, right? If you pour some water, that's water, uh, right? Uh, what happens to that water is it it comes through the sponge. It travels through all the little pores, and um, <laughs> it, 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 it that's what it does, right? But okay, why did I mention that? Well, because I mean that's an extreme case of really of, of high porosity in a sponge. High porosity, in fact, it's open porosity. Now, in in a lot of ceramics, we, we're not talking about that level of porosity, but porosity could even take the form of a scratch on the surface, um, or it could be you know tiny little closed pores that you don't even see. They're just they're internal, 
uh, but they're there. Next time you're walking on the sidewalk, take a close look at the concrete, and you will see, definitely, I guarantee you, you'll see some pores. Some of them are quite small. In fact, there'll be some that are too too small to see with your naked eye, but some of them you'll probably see with uh, just, just with your naked eye. Um, and so this is a big problem. And why is it a big problem in ceramics? Well, it's a big problem because of this, their poor intention. And what happens is the pores in a ceramic, they act... Uh, effectively, they're they're like little cracks, and they act as what we call stress. Actually, uh, I should. Uh, I'm trying to be consistent with my colors here. Um, if, it's a, if it's a new term, I know I'm a little bit cavalier with my use of colors, but I try to use yellow for a new term: stress concentrator. Okay, stress concentrator. And what that means is, I could sketch for you here, one way that we sometimes look at it is to consider a hypothetical big piece of material with a little pore in it, okay? And that's a little, that's a pore. So that you, you know, sometimes you call it a crack, okay? And then what we're doing is we're going to apply a stress to it. And I'm just going to go right ahead and say stress sigma sub zero, sigma naught far field stress. And then what we, what we can do is we can um, schematically just illustrate what the stress um, does. So let me just I'll distribute that across the sample here. Um, so the stress going on across the whole way, right? And we can follow the schematically that stress as it goes through the material. So what I mean by that is the stress here far, far away from the crack. It's uninfluenced by the crack would just proceed through in, in, in a, this, this type of manner here. And that lot of stress field, the lines of stress would be parallel to one another. But then what happens to the stress that's in initially transmitted to the material here? Well, it gets close to the crack, and it, it can't span. It can't jump across that absence of material there. So what it does, it diverts around the, around the crack. And so again, we'd have another line of stress here and does the same thing. It has to get around the crack. And if I do that for a few of them, right, what you start to see is right in there near the crack tip, the stress is concentrated. Okay, the stress is concentrated. The lines of stress are close together. The stress is concentrated. And so that means that the stress is higher here than this far field stress or the sigma naught. <clears throat> and for the for a, a simple case of um, this particular crack, we can actually we can quantify that. Okay, so I'm going to draw that crack out again here for this simple case of a crack, and I'm going to give it dimensions for you here. What's important about a crack? Well, how long the crack is, crack length, I'm going to call that A. Uh, actually, correction, we're not going to call it A. It's a little funny. Um, I thought I should, I should mention this here anyway. Um, if I make a crack on the surface, it would just look like this. There's, there's really one crack here, just that tip. And so what we do is we we define this dimension here as A, the crack length. And so you can sort of think about this internal crack as having two ends on it, doesn't it? It's like that sharp end there and that sharp end. So the crack length of this internal crack we'd call 2 times A, because you've got over here and over here you've got A. Yeah, you've got two cracks back to back, if you will. So that's the way the math works. So that's what we do. And then the other thing that's important about the crack is how sharp it is. How sharp the crack is. So if I blow that up for you, what that's going to look like is this. The crack coming to the material looks something like this. And what you can do is you can approximate how sharp the crack is with this, the radius of uh, circle that would fit into that. And we use the Greek letter rho for the radius. Okay, so that's the radius. And if it's a small radius, it's going to be really sharp. 
if it's a large radius, it's dull. Um, for example, there's an old woodworker's trick that if you got a some you know, some piece of, of material with a crack in it, okay, here's a crack. Okay, if you if you want to, it's, it's uh, you know, some piece of plastic or something like that, or even even a piece of wood and the cracks running along, maybe parallel to the grains or something. And this you want to stop that crack, you know, and you don't have you don't want to glue it together or something like that. What you can do is you can actually drill a little hole out in front of the crack, and what happens is then the crack enters the hole, and all of a sudden it has a larger radius, and so it's blunt. Okay, so a small radius of curvature is a sharp crack, and a large radius of curvature is what we'd call blunt or not sharp. And I think you, you, you may have an intuitive sense that, okay, we, we're more worried about sharp cracks and we're more worried about long cracks. And so we can actually do a, a basic approximation of what the value of the peak stress is. So what's the maximum stress at the tip of the crack? And we could express it as a fraction of the applied stress. And it turns out it's roughly... Um, it's roughly equal to 2 times um, uh, this, well, I'm going to try to explain it. So we're going to have a term here um, to the 1 half. And the term, what we're going to include is we're going to include the radius curvature and the length. So would you expect it, the, the maximum stress to be higher? for a long crack or a short crack. Well, for a, a long crack, you'd expect it to be worse. So for um, crack length, you'd expect to be in the numerator, right? Long crack is going to increase the maximum stress. Small radius of curvature is going to increase the stress. So that should be in the denominator. And so in fact, this is um, an equation that really approximates the stress concentration at the tip of a crack. So that's the radius of curvature there. And that's the crack length. And this is known as the stress concentration factor. Right, it's a factor, fraction, if you will. It runs from um, up to from zero to one, and uh, it, it approximates how much the stress is concentrated at the tip of the crack. I mean, that's actually also useful in mechanical design too. Say you've got a, you know, some base onto which you're going to weld or you're going to machine or fasten some kind of an upright. Well, if you design it like that, you might design it in your CAD software, and you find that you know it fits. You got the dimensions exactly the way you want. But what what you've done, if you're not careful, is you've designed a small radius of curvature on this inside corner. And what's going to happen is you're going to get cracks, um, initiating and propagating from that sharp inside corner. So what do we do instead of doing that? Well, good design practice is instead to go like this, and you design in what we call a fillet radius. So you design the largest radius for that inside corner that the design will tolerate. Okay, final thing here is, okay, so for this reason, because the stresses are concentrated at the tip of the crack, and because ceramics have no mechanism to increase the radius of curvature. If this was a metal and we had a sharp crack in it, do we had a sharp crack in a metal, well the metal can plastically deform. Or if this is the polymer, the polymer can plastically deform and that leads to an increase in the radius of curvature. But that can't happen in a metal because we said up here, right, there's no plastic deformation. So once you have a crack in a metal, it has no way of getting um, of increasing the, the radius of curvature. And so ceramics are very sensitive to 
the presence of porosity. And in fact, we can fit the experimental data for the strength, the fracture strength of a ceramic, the fracture strength, as a function of the porosity with this type of equation here. We've got some constant um, uh, theoretical maximum strength of the material times E to the minus NP. Okay, where sigma naught, like I said, is the theoretical full strength. I mean, if porosity P, that's porosity as a fraction, okay, from 0 to 1, pore fraction. If porosity is zero, that means it's fully dense. There's no porosity. Well, then e to the zero becomes one, so the fracture strength is just the theoretical full strength. But it's exponential, so we get a rapid decrease in strength as a function of porosity. Oh, and, and, and these are constants, okay? Constant material properties, material specific constants. So that's an important uh, and useful equation as well to keep in mind. And the real takeaway from this is you really have to be careful about porosity and any other types of cracks in, in, um, in ceramics.